that stands for People of Hertfordshire Want Equal Rights. It started when a small group of service users in Hertfordshire who were frustrated with how professionals were running their lives got together so that they could have a voice and speak up for themselves. In this video we will hear from three of Power's founder members about Power's early days. Arthur Bate, OBE, who sadly passed away in 2013, Judith Smart and Stephen Rathbone. We will also hear from advocate Michael Silver, who was there right at the beginning. So how did power start? Here, Arthur Bate explains in an interview recorded in 2010. After the Disabled Persons Act of 1986 that established the right to advocacy for disabled people, a number of less successful attempts at creating advocacy groups led to the involvement of a Hearts County worker called Bo Banks. Part of her remit was to look at advocacy where it, where it was in Hertfordshire. So they got, they got together a group of, you know, users and workers. And I was asked to draw that. Group. I would like to meet and we would say, well, actually, there are a small number of little advocacy groups going to the county. Um, how we can support that is um, we can be we could employ a worker to work, to work with a lot of group and to support them. So uh, we advertise and our team and people came into this, came into heart, yeah. And then we'll be back for using, using development. So he, he, he got together a group of users uh, with different disabilities. Uh, you have people with a physical disability and uh, very difficult very difficulty and people who use mental health service. Um, and this is quite unique. I was in the county of Hartfordshire, but maybe around the country, this practice or working one one no you know people you know people were people people were checked in their own care categories but to the midst of what was quite quite unique I was out of interest in because I was out of work with people with very difficult. I've never been in contact with people with mental health problems. It was a quite a interest in time for me. Here, Judith, Stephen, and Michael. Tell us how they became involved with advocacy and power. I became involved in the advocacy when I met Jimmy and Billy Cox. He led a group with in the power of 
and we talk about how our lives will be working by the years who we never wanted out of their lives. So we decided that we ought to speak up for ourselves and so let me protect us now how we wanted our lives to be. If we if we reach down the line to act this hard to hold out and to pick up a big charity we Work on getting a contribution to Kevin and then do other women up to the charity to be to make uh, uh, which we can power the people who are started people first that was because there was because there was an article in the papers sort of thing it's all sort of like an article in the papers when it come to an advocacy sequel and advocacy group looks like and meet the people and stuff so i was sorry with that and then put and then you know and then i was with people first and and then I met Isabel people first, and only progressed from there. I worked with people first because he gave me a voice, then, then, then from there, then from there, I, then I, then, then I come to power, and then that gave me a voice. I came to be involved with uh, Power through uh, a project, a pre-existing project called Speaking Out, which was simply mental health advocacy. From the very beginning, I think Power raised awareness uh, in a completely new way, um, that people had rights and that they should be argued for um, if people weren't listening. I think that Power immediately recognised this and realised that it applied um, really potentially to everyone. I think that was the big difference uh, that power made. Um, before that, uh, as we used to say, uh, it was a process from stroppy to slick that uh, people who had had a bad experience uh, using a particular service had banded together and become an advocacy project and were very stroppy and were trying to sort of, uh, I don't know, be able to do this in a more professional way. But power, I think, raised the awareness that everyone potentially uh, could be powerless and that uh, they, needed, uh, they needed support through uh, those rough and grim parts of life. Uh, so I think that was the unique contribution that, that power made, uh, that we all have rights and that we, we, can, we can fight for them, and, uh, but fight for them in a, in a nice way. <laughs> so, why the name Power? Well, uh, we, we, we won't do we went through the same process as uh, any new group 
Stuck in my mind, what we call, what we should call it. Should we call it? Should we have called it something else, or should we just? But uh, but but I'm, but power just stuck to me like that. Sort of. There wasn't any reason. Just I just. I just love the word power because it meant it doesn't mean it doesn't mean powerful. It just meant it just meant people stand up for equal rights. Today we have grown and now offer advocacy services in many other parts of the UK. But it's important that we don't forget where power started and the passion of those who help to create power remains strong. Uh, ever, si ever since I've been here, it's, it's, made, it's made me proud for who we are and where we come from and what, what our organisation is going to be doing in the future. Well, I'm very proud. I'm very, very proud of what we have, what we've achieved. I mean, you know, I've been 14 years at all the work, and everyone, everyone really, everyone does that. Um, and now we provide services to you know, quite a big area of, uh, of the country and you know, it, it, it's a lot of hard to remember, remember that you know, this charity started with a, a, a very a real talking together in the little room in the open. I was in any